I guess the key question is, what does humility look like? I think is it's one of those things that people think, oh, you know, humility, you know, makes you look weak. And I've heard that, and I've seen that. The ten of us just looked at each other, kind of bemused. And I, I said, okay, I withdrew. And in that moment, there was a complete reflection of, okay, this monk's still on his journey. It's okay, but that that was not humility at all. The third one goes without saying, is perseverance. You've got to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it until, you know, you manage to resolve one thing and then you're on to the next bit. Okay, because it's all, you know, I'll, I call it the sharpening the sword of consciousness. You know. Welcome to Martial Mind Power Podcast. I'm Jatinder Palaha with Sifu Lakloy. And uh, we're going to be going into the art of thinking without thinking. Sifu, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. You look thank cold. <laughs> no, actually, I'm very warm. <laughs> as a I've got a thick jumper on today as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the weather's uh, been nippy, to say the least. So, um, yeah. Awesome, Just nice man. Awesome. warm. It's all good, nice and cozy. That's how we want it. So that's it, man. That's it. I'm just gonna hit the random generator on Google and see what it comes up with. It's come up with four, six, eight. And the title is Humus. And it's a, a picture of, uh, with a yellow background with a guy falling down. And yeah. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know, humus, humus. It's like that food, right? <laughs> hey, gr- ground up chickpeas, huh? Yeah, ground up chickpeas. <laughs> With pita bread. With pita bread. That's what, and it's got that kind of color to it as well. So, um, but, but just for the <laughs> listeners and, and viewers, it's spelled H U M U S. So more like humus rather than hummus. <laughs> That's the word I was trying to look for. <laughs> so yeah, so the guy for Are you hungry? Are you hungry or something? Because <laughs> you got food <laughs> on your mind. <laughs> okay. Um I can just go by the picture. Guy falling to the ground, a human falling to the ground. Um, which is coming up. So maybe it's about being grounded, uh, about Touching the floor. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's what's coming up for me on this one. <laughs> All right. So this is a tricky one, really, <clears throat> because humus is uh, a Latin word. Okay. And uh, I thought it was a beautiful uh, word. It is a beautiful word, word but in Latin, it's um, there's obviously a play on the word hummus as in yeah. Uh, so so it's a it's not not something that's you know just directly translates into something that you can understand rationally but hum humus is a latin word that basically stands for humility uh. yeah <clears throat> so um i personally think that humility is one of the most underrated words Mm. in the Western world. And, um, and it's something that actually we really need to cultivate as a society, humility. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think, I think a source uh, for that, a root cause for that is we, as a society, um, in the West are trained for competition from a very early age, early age. Right. So, and competition, all that does is it divides, it separates, and that brings in a sense of pride because you then start to belong to an organization, a team, an identity, a pool of, um, 
people um and through competition i think humility gets eaten up mm. right <clears throat> because ultimately the 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 weeds that start to grow amongst that that start to shadow the humility inside you is actually pride and ego mm. all right <clears throat> and humility is complete opposite of that so the, the key thing i think is really to cultivate humility now yeah. humility i guess the key question is what does humility look like mm. but i think is it's one of those things that people think oh you know humility you know makes you look weak and mm. i've heard that and i've seen that when you have humility and you know humility responding to someone and you may take a uh, you know a deep breath to to clear your mind get clarity in yourself to connect with your inner thoughts so you can respond with a high state of consciousness um i've been in situations where i've been pressured to speak faster or to respond quicker Mm-hmm. and there's no humility in that because all you're doing is just talking unconsciously mm-hmm. uh, rather than talking consciously <clears throat> talking consciously using consciousness in other words uh is to have an ethical and moral view over everything that's happening in that moment in time and mm-hmm. and to process that and integrate that with the context in which you have in a conversation and respond with something that's meaningful purposeful actionable uh something that will is useful something that's good um and um humility is, is sometimes saying things in, in a way that you maintain the ecology uh mm-hmm. amongst the people <clears throat> and the congruency uh, within yourself and the people that you're conversing with <clears throat> um and on other occasions it's not saying anything at all mm. because sometimes what's not said says more than what you do say mm-hmm. all right so you know there's there's no real script to this koan in the sense of how do you how does humility look like these are just mm. some ideas that i'm sharing that are coming to me off the top of my yeah. head some things that i'm feeling you know uh, absolutely man. it's like it's like um like if you have like general conversation about it like you know if you look at human behavior um i think most times when this thing pops up about the guys in his ego the girls in her ego she proudy she this and that they're not humble enough you know it's it's almost like um causes a bit of agitation for people when they experience these things with other people isn't it Absolutely. um like sometimes people are like well why do they think they need to be like that or do that when it's not really necessary um and that's why and then sometimes even when people are you could tell this person be very egotistical is being very pride full of pride um and that sometimes is better to be humble because when you're too much in your head you can end up doing stuff that doesn't actually benefit people and actually can work against you as well so in a way the humility element is almost like hum- uh, humbling is they say they're humble they're grounding themselves they're like getting present to the moment um and also then leading towards that kind of state of gratitude because i think humility and gratitude work quite nicely together um so it's an interesting dynamic because i think i mean it comes up in different situations scenario but i think most cases is when is human behavior interaction with each other and how people are being and coming across yeah. in situations or scenarios where we do end up judging people based on how people behave yeah. isn't it and we said yeah. now nah, you need to be humble you we say need to you don't need to as such but it's like i don't know there seems to be more balance and flow in 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 a situation where somebody's humble and grounded in doing things in life you just come across it's it's a self mastery isn't it that's where we're leading to 
Because humility leads to self mastery. We know people know that people in the ego cause problems, but having humility actually needs more work. Yeah, because it's like mind over matter in a way, kind of thing to get grounded. Yeah. So, so the thing you're you're absolutely right, and there's two, and there's you know, there's something I want to I want to talk about is one is to cr- connect gratitude, right, with with uh, humility, right. You know, how how does that connect? Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. And then <clears throat> the other thing is, um, is I've forgotten. What, what, was the, what was the last thing you said? Humility, gratitude. Um, so and let's talk about come back to you later. <laughs> yeah. So... I'll come back <laughs> so, to you later. <laughs> so let, let, let's talk about gratitude, right? And if it's important, it'll come back, right? <laughs> so, so gratitude, right? You said, you know, it's you know, uh, humility is it feels like gratitude. But here's the thing: what does gratitude feel like? Mm. Now, now, let's just do this as a little experiment, right? So, for our listeners and viewers, okay. So, just you know, become present right now just you know sit where you're sitting or stand where you're standing just notice where you're not just notice what you're noticing just become aware of you know the weight of your body going through the feet onto the floor you know beneath you or if you're sitting the weight of your body sitting or resting against the chair or sofa or wherever you're sitting on just become aware of your body become aware of your existence right here and just for a moment, start to bring your attention <clears throat> to your heart center. Okay, so bring your attention right up to the heart center and just start to feel and imagine your heart beating. Just imagine that, you know, that energized and ox- oxygenized blood f- uh, flowing through your body, invigorating all your um, all your uh, uh, organs and muscle tissue and bone tissue and just invigorating giving new life to all the cells in your body just start to feel that start to feel your breath as you inhale and as you exhale as you inhale and as you exhale do one more as you inhale and as you exhale and just Become aware of your heart space. Just feel your heart. Maybe if you want, you can take your hand, open hand, just put it over your heart for a second. And as you sit there, first of all, I want you just to express absolute gratitude. And you can close your eyes if you want to. I'm going to close my eyes because I'm just going to go with this. For absolute gratitude for just being alive today, for waking up this morning and being here right now, able to share and receive the messages that we're trying to share with you today. Just hear you listening and watching us. Just uh, become grateful for you uh, being able to breathe the the fresh air around you and uh, just become present in that moment. Now just become grateful, feel the gratitude for having clothes on your back Hopefully you're in a warm place of feeling warm or have a warm blanket that you can cover yourself with to feel warmer, having a bed to sleep at night so that you're nice and warm and cozy. I just feel gratitude for having running water in your tap that you can go to and you can wash and you can brush your teeth and you can bathe and then you can drink and it sustains your life, water. And I just feel gratitude for the food that you have on your table, no matter how big or small amount of food you might have. But just be grat, just express a gratitude for the food that you are receiving right now, and be and express gratitude for Mother Earth for giving us all the food and the clothes and everything that we use on our daily basis. At the same time, you can feel gratitude <clears throat> for. Uh, the family and friends that you have in your life and uh, people that support you, people that are always there for you, people that check up on you, people that call in on you, people that you like to call in on and and hang out with. I feel gratitude for for, uh, 
if you are working for the for your job even if the job you might not enjoy it just feel gratitude that it might sus- that it's sustaining you and enabling you to do other things maybe it's allowing just allowing you to meet your your um, basic needs of having a home and food and you and and utilities and warm water in your house and the heating and so on let's just feel all that gratitude so and all as you feel this gratitude i just want you to start to feel what's happening in your heart as you start to feel this sense of gratitude you should start to feel uh start to feel your heart starts to pour out uh, as if there is um, an emanation of love just starting to emanate from inside you feel that start to spread out from your heart out in all directions 360 degrees starts to emanate out and as it starts to emanate feel that gratitude start to spread out into the room start to spread out uh, beyond the room into the next room in your house or apartment block or wherever you're living, right? Filling up the whole building, filling up the street, filling up the whole area, filling up the town or city that you live in, filling up the whole of the UK, gradually spreading around the world as it's spreading around the globe. Just feel that gratitude extending out. Now you feel that gratitude extending out just from, not just from Mother Earth, but beyond that, out into our galaxy, right? It starts to envelope everything in our in our galaxy. And then it starts to emanate out towards the other universes, right? And it starts to emanate out, out into the metaverses, out into the cosmos. Just feel that gratitude, just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And if you were to, for a moment, just to tune into the sense of gratitude that you are expressing, and you were to sum that up into one word, what would you call that? And I want you to remember that word. I want you to bring that word back with you when you open your eyes in a moment, if you closed your eyes. And I want to ask you that question again. What was that word? What did you feel? Mm -hmm. JT, what did you feel? Love. (laughs) Spot on. So gratitude feels like love. Now, that gratitude exercise is just a momentary exercise we've just done here, right? Mm -hmm. To to help you connect with the love that you are. The highest vibration in the cosmos that binds the cosmos together, okay? Humility is expressing love in everything you do through that emanation of love, through being that emanation of love. Even when the person opposite you is in your face or up in your grill about something or on your back about something, all the different negative ways people could make you agitated, create animosity, aggress you, whatever it might be. But when you're acting through love, you start to see the love in their actions. You also start to see the fear in their actions, right? Not everyone's operating out of love, but there's always a reason of love why they are operating. But when you start to recognize signs of what it is that they love and why they're behaving the way they're behaving, then... The, you can express and connect with them at a better level, at a deeper level, because you know why they're doing that. Mm-hmm. Now, people act out of love for three. There's three different expressions, okay? Well, number one is for someone you love, okay? Might be your partner, might be your mother, father, brother, sister, friend, whoever, okay? Might be for something you love. It might be, you know, you love your car, Okay, you love your jacket, you love whatever it is. Okay. And the third one is yourself. Okay. You love yourself. Okay. And that can sometimes sometimes the love for the self shows up as ego and pride. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so these are the three things that people, three reasons that people try and protect. And these are the three reasons that things that people love. 
And it is for these one of these three reasons, or all three, that people fight. So if these are the reasons people fight, and they're fighting through for love, therefore the, the solution for fighting is love itself. Um, so to connect to humility allows you to connect with why, why the per, another person is behaving the way they're behaving. And when you understand that, you have this sense of, okay. And it's probably best just to explain it using using an, an, an emotional expression there. And that leads to the highest expression of humility. Ultimate humility is selfless service. That is seva, as they call it. Okay. Seva in Sikhi and Sanskrit and so on. It means selfless service. So how can you serve that person now selflessly now that you understand their plight? Okay. And now humility starts to starts to become expressed outwardly. Now you start to become humile in your actions. Okay. Now all of that is not very easy to do because you have to be attuned to yourself. Okay. <clears throat> um, this is where your self-mastery cultivation has to come in. Um, you have to work on yourself in order to really be connected with yourself. Uh, as, I, as I say, you know, you need to know yourself before you can know others. And only when you can know others can you then know something greater. Um, so it takes time, it takes work. I just keep working on it because when you get to that point, everything will be blissful, even if, you know, there is a confrontation or a conflict of sorts, okay? And it doesn't matter because you connect and you will respond appropriately at that given moment in time, okay? Um, so there's a there's an interesting um, saying that comes to mind in Punjabi. They say, Nimea no fala lagade. And what that means is in context to like the example given is like trees, for example, like the really, really big, long, tall trees, they don't give fruit, right? It's only the low bearing, like lower, smaller plants that give fruit. So the saying, Nimea no fala, Nimea means low, like almost like humility closer to yeah. the ground, yeah. that those things have more fal. Fal means like food and fruit and, you know, yeah. um, abundance kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that it, it happens more so in nature to the the ones that are close to the ground. Yeah. And it's usually used as an example of humility to say that if you're humble, using humility, there's like more in that than there is than the tall, big, yeah. strong trees kind of thing. So, so more fruit and being yeah <laughs> low to the ground or, or grounded right grounded which is which is another beautiful point because actually <clears throat> humility is having a sense of being grounded mm. and uh centered uh self-connected um so if you know you ever feel anxious and nervous and you know up in your head right you'll feel that you're way above your head and you're kind of like don't know where you are you become disorientated discombobulated mm. now when that happens you kind of feel lost okay even though you know your ego is saying oh, i got this you know oh, i don't know what i'm doing you know how dare you this that and the other <clears throat> um but actually you've just lost your lost your grounding and mm -hmm. you're now you know like a kite flapping in the wind right and now it's out of control right and um and really, is if you're grounded, you can control that kite, okay? <clears throat> and you want to be able to, you know, regain mastery over that kite so that it can now fly fly smoothly again, you mm. know? Uh, regain tension in the string, reposition the angle of the string, realign it with the wind, and so on, you know? Um, so that's where the work has to be done to yeah. tighten things up. Okay, so in order to tighten things up, you have to be grounded on the floor to do that. And and you know what's funny about that is that you know in life often there's this um, kind of element of humbling circumstances as well. 
And those kind of things usually happen when somebody is so much in their ego, so much in their pride, that something happens around them that creates humbling circumstances. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the universe is even saying, humble, be be humble, because if you're not, you're going to fall to the ground like in that picture, right? Yeah. And um, and that's a, that's a big lesson in nature, like to be grounded, you know, be grounded, be present um, and understand that and, and not, you know, let the universe create the humbling circumstances for you because it might not be that great. There might be quite a big challenge, you know, yeah. whereas if you're like more get balanced and grounded, um, you know, it's it's like they say, you know, the higher you are, the, the greater your fall, you know? Yeah. yeah no, <laughs> so it's, it's almost like that kind of context. It's, it's funny, when I was a kid <clears throat> and if I ever fell on the floor, my mom used to say, you know, did you pray to Mother Earth? Mm hmm right <clears throat> wow. and uh i think yeah actually you know what i never really heeded her any kind of attention uh and i used to fall quite a lot <laughs> mm. <laughs> playing football cycling bmxing and all that kind of stuff you know the floor has to be your friend <laughs> uh but you know <clears throat> especially like you know when you're a kid right you know i was just giving the example bmxing you know the whole idea of bmxing is showboating you know ultimately mm -hmm. it's doing tricks for yourself but then you know you want to show your tricks to your mates right <clears throat> and when you land on that floor i'm telling you right it puts a dent in your ego right it puts a dent in your pride for a moment right so that's probably hurt more than anything else because you're like oh shit my mate's looking right <clears throat> but on top of that uh on top of feeling like an idiot um there's this humbling emotion of just being brought down to mother earth just mm. being brought down to the ground right yeah. and and if you if anybody's ever fallen onto the floor or even if you just got outside and just whether it's a, whether you're touching a tarmac road right which can be very humbling if you fall on that right or you're touching mm -hmm. you know uh you know your lawn and your garden or whatever it is just connect with that you know <clears throat> And just feel the vast expanse of Mother Earth and feel and connect to the energy of Mother Earth. I'm telling you, it's magnanimous. It's huge. Right? Feel the energy when you do that. Um, so humility is most definitely grounding. And uh yeah. Mm. Definitely, man. Definitely. That's a that's a very interesting. I think it's I think people know, right? You just know. You, you know, you be in social situations, you be in a wide environment. And you just, you just know. You know, people start having those conversations. Well, that person was like this, or did you see that as well? And and even though you're not trying to be judgmental or anything, your behavior expresses it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you can clearly see it when someone's in their pride and in their ego, um, yeah. so much, so much so that they're almost like looking down at you, right? Um, that I'm better than you. I'm the best. This and the other. Yeah. Um, and then the you know grinding or humbling circumstances can take place, which will, like yeah. you said, bring you to. And it does happen because when we yeah. fall, we could get hurt, right? And then yeah. we go, get sad and think about it, and and then we might even realize what we've done and thought, oh, yeah. I'll get it now, I'll get it next time. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I think I think as part of that as well, <clears throat> the, there's a there's an important lesson in that, and that is the awareness that you are, you have egocentricity right mm. um and that is playing out in your life and how is that do, playing do you out think, in your life do you think um like i i often feel that sometimes people get ego and pride mixed up mm. yeah because um ego tends to be given like you know a negative connotation to some degrees but the ego is like all, almost your identity as well whereas pride is like yeah i'm me this kind of that kind of feel and vibe to it yeah. whereas sometimes a few people get the two mixed up right um so actually what are your thoughts on, on that yeah you touch on something quite interesting actually <clears throat> because ego is not necessarily bad mm. but when, it, when you're uh, i think i think if you put it in that context and let's just go with that for a moment when your ego plays out as as pride mm. pride pride meaning you know you're elevated among a uh, amongst the community that you're being proud in 
for instance, okay, uh, showing that you're essentially better than them <clears throat> or you're elite in some way, um, that's pointing people down. Okay. Mm. That's pointing people down. If people elevate you to that point where they they are celebrating that you are great and you feel proud, then that's that's a nice thing. Exactly. Right? It's such a right interesting fine line, isn't it? <clears throat> and the same with ego, right? You you have your you have your ego identity, right? But then if you're if you're if you're attached to that ego identity mm. and that is you all the time and that's me i'm so great blah 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 right now you're bound okay so you can separate that and uh, even the wise sages uh, talk about how when uh, you let you let go of the ego but you can be playful with it as and when you mm. need to yeah and that's when the ego becomes becomes uh, a tool that you can use to teach to uh, educate and inspire and empower people not necessarily to denigrate someone right because <clears throat> that's that's the point isn't it mm. is when ego and pride are working in their mysterious ways right to denigrate someone to put someone down that's a no no mm. not nice okay you know but it's when you can use those facets about yourself without being attached to it but be playful with it you can start to lift people up elevate, now yeah. now you start to become a game changer right now mm. you start to become someone that can lead people right through through humility now that humility starts to become a strength, starts to become power, but you're not attached to it. Mm. And that's the beauty of it. You're not attached to it and it doesn't define you. And isn't it interesting that you can, you can actually kind of feel that like when you're in situations where there's like leadership, you know, and who, who is the leadership or who, who you like might want to be like, you know what? I don't mind being a part of this person's team because I believe in what they're all about, but more so great. They're really human, awesome and humble human being, you know, yeah. and people like, like, it's almost like they, they feel drawn to that as well. Whereas yeah. the other side, they'd be like, Hmm, but then you got the flip side because you still get the people with the ego magnetism that is still attracting almost like that type of crowd as well. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's like, it's such a, it's such a fascinating uh, uh, dynamic as to how that plays out. Um, which just makes you think that it looks like when they refer to the middle path, that path of balance and humility is is almost like the balanced way to go. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, like I said, being playful with ego uh, is is an art, okay? But mm. it means that you have to get to a point where that ego is not it's not imprisoning you. Yeah. Okay? You're not imprisoned in that identity because you're not the ego. You're the spirit. That's it. You're the, you're the, you're the soul, your individual spirit expressed in this lifetime mm. through the experiences that you're having right now. So that where can't the, be contained, in it? Where, it can't yeah, be contained exactly. It can't be contained. Mm. And how do you put an ego identity onto that? Mm. And if you did put an ego identity on that, I'll call that a spiritual, spiritual pride. Mm. Right? That's right. So... Which is a thing. We did a podcast yeah. on that some time ago. Yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. We, we did a <laughs> podcast on that one. No, there's a cover. That is a cover. One of the covers. <clears throat> so um, that's how that part plays into it. Because you know, um, you could be, you could be on a process of self realization, on of God realization, and as you go through that process, there's a thing that happens, and that thing is spiritual pride. I know. Yeah. I felt it right, and I was Absolutely. sat there thinking. Why, if I can, if I have got all the answers to the cosmos in within me, and I've seen them, and I've felt them, and I've experienced them, and somebody else hasn't, why, why haven't they seen it? Mm. And then I felt this like spiritual pride, as I call it, whirling mm. up inside mm. me. And I thought, whoa, 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 hold on, oh, what's, what's yeah, happening? exactly, you know, what, exactly. what is this? Yeah, and then, then I had to like focus on that for a moment 
and humble and, yourself. <laughs> yeah, and humble myself. But it didn't happen straight away. Yeah, I had to kind of try, and it took a while. Mm-hmm. Maybe it took days or weeks for me to kind of figure out why am I feeling like this, and if if ultimate expression of spirituality is love, and I'm thinking that hold on. I know something that most people haven't ex- ever experienced or may not ever experience. Then mm-hmm. why does that make me better? Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It, in fact, it makes me their teacher, but not from a pride standpoint. It's my job, my my divine duty to help. Exactly, man. And that's why we're here. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> so, it's just, yeah, so, it, it, that's so funny, and and it does happen. I mean. Um, it, it, I think we all go through it, isn't it? It's like it's exactly what you said, you know. But it's 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 a greater, I feel, achievement or understanding of self awareness. And what we're talking about, mind mastery, is when you're able to actually see that, yeah, and realize that that's what's going on, yeah. right? Even even at the degree where you think, oh, this person is highly spiritual, is that is it? Are they really? Are they, yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Are because they? exactly yeah. what you just shared there with the spirit, spiritual pride and spiritual ego and and that is the thing if people are not you know aware of that is like we it's it's interesting because it's like learning at every level so sometimes you know even though a person is highly acclaimed they may not be highly healed right yeah. and they may not they still may have things to figure out um because it, it's like a lifelong journey to some degree as well with some yeah. of these things right um, and that's that's what makes this stuff so fascinating and interesting yeah. is that it happens at every level. Um, yeah. Don't just think, don't put someone on a pedestal because you think, yeah. oh, this person knows it all. Uh, uh, that's not always the case. Like do your own thinking about it as well. Be intelligent enough to saying, hang on, where's this person coming from and going? Are they actually got good intentions? Because that's what it boils down to, is intention, right? Yeah. Like even, even in like, you know, the courts, when we're in a court, there's a pro- problem or situation going on. They have to prove your intention. Like, what was your intention behind what you're trying to do? And if they find your intention to be guilty, then you're obviously guilty. But if they find that your intention was guilty, then th- there's leniency there because it's like they didn't deliberately try to do this. So the intention element of it is very, very powerful. Like, where are you coming from? Why are you doing what you're doing? What's your intention yeah. behind this? And that's something to be aware of as well. I, I, you know, just uh, just to kind of support that point, uh, the the point about <clears throat> don't put people on a pedestal, no matter you know mm. how how high you think they are, right? Whatever high means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, recently, I spent uh, a week in a monastery um, uh, living with monks, mm. and one of the days we had to do a road trip, uh, and. Um, one of our our monks, uh, our leader monks, he said to us, he said, you know, go to the minibus, okay? And mm-hmm. it's on a, you know, f- he's got 16 seats on there, first come, first served. Yeah, get there early so you get a seat on the bu- minibus. All right. And we were we were heading into central London. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, so there were 10 of us uh, and we all went to the minibus uh, early and there were two people already waiting there. Now, these guys, the two monks that were there, they, you know, they, they've been at that monastery for a while, okay, mm-hmm. maybe a year, maybe a few years, who knows, <clears throat> but, you know, they're, they're what I call, you know, long-term residents of that monastery, or longer term than us, because we were only a few days in, anyway, <clears throat> one of the monks turned around and he goes, because, um, um, you you guys thinking of coming on this minibus? Like, yeah, I said, you know, our senior monk told us to come here and uh, get here early, um, so that we get a seat because it's first come first served. So we we you know uh, made an effort to get here on time. And he goes, well, you know what? We're regulars. We do this every week. So you better go sort out your own transport. Oh wow! <clears throat> and. The ten of us just looked at each other, kind of bemused, and I, I said, "Okay." I withdrew, and in that moment, there was a complete reflection of, "Okay, this monk still on his journey is okay," but that that was not humility at all. 
okay <clears throat> so you know not all monks are humal or have humus okay um because they're also cultivating that process i didn't hold him against him we we rustled up a couple of cars and we made our own way there mm-hmm. um but from that moment there was a there was a stark realization that the 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 state of consciousness of each person whether you're a monk or not is different and the good thing about monks on that journey is they're cultivating that so let's just say a monk you used to be a serial killer and now he's become a monk right that is going to he's going to take longer right because his his vibration is so low even if the vibration gets to here it might still look bad but it's come up and that's okay right mm-hmm. <clears throat> because they're on that process of ascension so yeah. we have to allow some room for that but also understand that it appears in all walks of life yeah right <clears throat> so that i uh, you know i hope i hope uh you know helps you understand the whole it's- idea of not putting people on a pedestal no absolutely and thanks for sharing that because that just shows the whole kind of yin yang principle about the good and the light and the light within the sorry the the dark within the good the dark within the light and the light within the good right so <laughs> it it shows that that's how it kind of yeah. emphasizes that you could you know you could think somebody's spiritual but there's still darkness there and someone there's darkness there's still goodness there as well right yeah. so it's quite yeah it's quite interesting how the dynamic yeah. works and, and and you know that 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 actually is another expression how how ego is directly related to attachment mm. right that monk was attached to his seat and attached to his comfort yeah right and convenience of going on that minibus yeah that's right that's right simple it's a simple attachment but it's still an attachment exactly yeah uh, that's yeah i mean i i remember when i realized that whole thing about attachment that you can have attachment to your own thoughts as well right like i used to think it was attachment to material objects and then one day i thought hang on a minute you're attached to your thoughts like like you said you go to an event for example you sit down in a particular seat you take a break come back and somebody else is taking your seat and you're like why are you in my seat for when it's not even your seat it's just you decided to make it your seat right yeah yeah it's yeah. exactly that isn't it it's like <laughs> the attachment of your thoughts about what you think certain things mean and why you think those certain things mean is worth exploring and questioning yeah yeah i think uh, on the on the on the journey of cultivating humility uh, the some some of the most powerful qualities that you need to cultivate are uh, patience and the other one is tolerance mm-hmm. right <clears throat> and uh the third one goes without saying is perseverance mm-hmm. got to keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it until you know you manage to resolve one thing and then you're on to the next bit okay because yeah. it's all you know I I call it the sharpening the sword of consciousness you know yeah. um is that sword ever really truly like super sharp that it's you know reached the sharpest is ever going to be you know <laughs> especially when you're you're taking it from the bare metal and, molded and it. Th- that analogy is quite cool because it's like you could get it sharp but then that means you're not using it mm-hmm. isn't it because if it just stays sharp you're not using it it's not going through tampering it's not going through the cutting and slicing and you you're not using it. it's just the unused this is that proverb um uh, you know unbook re- uh, unread book is just a pile of paper right <laughs> in that same context you know the unused sword is just a sword isn't it so if you if you if you are sharpening that means you're actually learning and you know, and growing and getting used up as such you know in in that kind of context of things otherwise you just sit there and put it on a mantelpiece and let it just shine there and just a piece anything. of metal isn't it <laughs> that's it it's just a piece of metal otherwise <laughs> Yeah, you see, you see, the it's interesting that you say that, but this this actually plays in really well with the when to use the ego playfully, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they they say um, uh, intelligence uh, is 
is uh, having a sword in a war, right? Wisdom is knowing when to draw it, mm. <clears throat> right? So it's one of those, right? Ego is like a sword, but if used in the wrong way, can be devastating, yeah. okay? It can hurt people, right? But used in the right way, it could be used to free people, mm. right? It could cut people out of a out of a net that they're trapped in or cut off a shackle that they need to be freed from right exactly. that's where it becomes beautiful because you think ah you just liberated someone isn't that the idea and you might liberate somebody from a little idea just a little yeah. idea that they attach they attached yeah. to yeah that's that's when it starts to become the game all right mm -hmm. all right and that's that's when you start to become playful with it yeah. and you can enjoy the art of humility and also the art of you know embracing your ego in a beautiful liberating nurturing way mm. so exactly man wow yeah deep humility. stuff man deep stuff humility is amazing man so so um yeah shall i read the current yeah it's a nice short one <laughs> it, is, it is a short one it's, it's you know there's uh, you know, I like to think there's not a lot to humility, but a lot of work to be done. Mm. <laughs> All right. So the word humility comes from the Latin words for earth or soil, humus, and means to bring, bring back down to earth. Okay. Mm. So I'm going to read that again. The word humility comes from the Latin words for earth or soil, humus, and means to bring back down to earth. Hence, you've got the guy that's falling, okay, free falling. Uh, we must remain grounded at all times, else when the wind blows, we can get swept away in the currents of emotion and ego. Mm. The end. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's, that's it. That's amazing, man. And that was on page 468 for anybody who's interested from the book, The Art of Thinking Without Thinking. And this thing is brilliant, man. You can just pick it up whenever, randomly pick a page, and you're bound to draw inspiration from it. So, you know, if anybody is interested, just uh, Google it, check out Amazon, um, and you can go get it from Marshall Mind Power website. Um, wow. Well, on that note, Sifu, I think um, we'll call it a day and uh, retune in again next time. Um, mm -hmm. Any last words before we shut down? <laughs> Enjoy the process, guys and Enjoy girls. That's it. Just just go out there and have fun with it. Um, <clears throat> don't take this stuff too seriously. Mm. Right? It's meant you meant to meant to have fun with it. You're meant to be playful with it. But playful seriously, or seriously playful. Mm. Right. That's another con. We'll go into that That's one another day. <laughs> I hope you get the idea. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Until next time. Signing out.